Digital signatures will confirm the identity of the person who sent the workbook. That's what they're mainly used for. And they're typically issued by a certification authority or a CA, in other words, a trusted third party who issues these things. And they'll contain a few things like a serial number, a digital signature of issuing authority, expiration dates, name and copy of certificate holder's public key, so the user, you, can verify that certificate is authentic. And however these third parties do it, whoever you sign up from, to confirm that the signature is accurate, they may have you log in or punch in a number, the serial number that is, to confirm that whoever sent you this workbook is who they say they are. In any case, once you attach the signature to the document, it cannot be modified without removing the digital signature. So if my coworker Carrie always digitally signs these documents and I get one that's not signed, it could be one of two things. One, she forgot to sign it, in which case I can email her saying, hey, what's the deal? Can I trust this? Would you please resend it and digitally sign it? Or two, she did, and somebody intercepted it from a server or something, made changes to it. Now, there are two types of signatures. They're both uh, basically digitally signing the uh, document here. One is non-visible. In other words, you have to click on an icon down here in the uh, status bar to be able to open up the task pane to see the digital signature. In fact, anytime you digitally sign, uh, one way or the other, it'll always have a little red ribbon down below to let you know that it's signed. But in any case, you click on it, opens up the task pane, that's one. That's the hidden digital signature. The other one that's visible is basically a signature line. It has an X with a line underneath it that you can go ahead and type in your name on that line. And it digitally signs it as well. Both of them will have a serial number attached to it, just whichever way you prefer. Something fancy that's visible or something that you have to open up the task pane to view. So if I want to do it non-visible at first, then I'd come up here, click on the File tab, go to Info, then come down here and click on Protect Workbook, and go to Add a Digital Signature. The other way, if I want a signature line, one that's visible, then I come up here and click on the Insert tab, come over here to the Text Group, and click on the Signature Line. See, when I hover over it, it gives you an X with a line underneath it, the name, and then you just go ahead and type in your name above the line. They both digitally sign or attach that serial number to the uh, document here. In any case, let's do it the first way. Let's go ahead and do a non-visible. Come up here, click on the File tab, and what I mean by non-visible, one that's not a signature line. Go down to Info to Protect Workbook and come down here and click on Add a Digital Signature. Now, because this requires that you sign up with some third party to be able to give you that serial number or that uh, secure access key code when you digitally sign your documents, I'll have you investigate that and look that up, but here I'll give you the steps. So when you do get assigned that digital key, at least you know how to uh, digitally sign your documents here. And here we go. Microsoft has a disclaimer here that says that you cannot warrant a digital signature's legal enforceability. Just use it to confirm it's from that person who they say they are. And when it comes to using uh, third-party digital signature services, you can either click on here or click OK. And it'll ask you, do you want to get an ID from a Microsoft partner, or do you want to create your own? Again, I'm going to go ahead and do the basics and create our own. You can uh, find out which third-party partner you want to go through. And then once you find that one, that third party, go ahead and set it up, and then follow the steps that I have here to go ahead and sign it. Now, the way that I'm doing it, if you read the disclaimer down below, it says you will be able to verify the authenticity of your signature, but only on this computer. So it makes no sense to digitally sign this and then email it to somebody because, like it says, you can't confirm the authenticity of it when it leaves this computer, only if somebody wants to verify it from this computer. So here we go. We click OK. And it'll ask me to enter in the information included in my digital ID. Do I want an email address for somebody to get a hold of me? Maybe. Organization. Then any location. Just Utah. Go ahead and click Create. Now once we created that digital signature, we don't have to recreate it again. It's automatically now set up. We just need to go to the next step, which is the purpose for signing this document. And as I mentioned, this is a non-visible signature. It says right here, the signature will not be visible within the content of this document. Do I want to be signing it as Kurt Kershaw, of course, and the purpose for signing is um, to confirm, or I can write whatever else that I want to put in there so whoever views the digital signature can read that and go, oh, this is why you signed it. In any case, go ahead and click Sign. Signature has been successfully saved with this document. If the documents change, your signature will become invalid. Click okie dokie, and there we go. It's got a couple of highlights here. The workbook's been signed. This workbook has been marked as final to discourage editing. Let's go ahead and come up here on the Home tab. 
And there we go, mark as final. The author has marked it as final. Please don't edit it. If you try to edit it, it will remove the signature that you see down here. This document contains signatures, that little fancy red uh, ribbon. Go ahead and click on it to open up the signatures tied to this document. We've got one. You can go ahead and click on the drop down arrow and get signature details. And there it is. Purpose of signing this was to confirm this or whatever your uh, purpose is. Go ahead and click view if you want to view the signature, the information here. In which case if you use a trusted third party they may have more information there. I can go ahead and go to that third party online and say okay this person who sent me the certificate are they really who they say they are? Are they signed up with you? They'll validate it their way and we can go ahead and uh, confirm that. And then once I'm done close out and you know okay I can trust this person but if I want to make changes to it or anybody else does and they intercept it they can go ahead and click on edit anyway and editing it will remove the signature. We can say no. We can try it another way. Click on the drop down arrow, remove it. It's going to get rid of it and say yes. Signature has been removed. I can now make changes. No more signatures. So can't trust this unless, of course, I'm the one that's removing it and wants to make changes. And then go ahead and sign it myself and send it back to Carrie Digitally Signed saying this is from me. The other way to do it was to go ahead and add a signature line, which, like I said, you can come up here, click on the Insert tab. Go to the text group, click on the signature line, click OK, follow the same steps. A suggested signer for this, example, John Doe, well, it's going to be me. The title, and this is the information that's going to go underneath the signature line, because then above the signature line, I'll type in my name as an example of me signing it. And we can say CEO, and then suggested signer's email address, I won't add one. And then do I want to show the signed date in the signature line? Sure. Um, do I want to allow the signer to add comments in the sign dialog? Go ahead and check it if you'd like. Click okie dokie. And there it is. So I've got my name. I've got my title. I've got the line above. And if I want to go ahead and sign it, double click it. Click OK. And then just go ahead and type in your name as you showing that you're fancy when it comes to signing it. Is there a purpose? In any case, whatever purpose it is. And then click sign and then click OK. It's been added. Now there's something fancy and visible. So go ahead and email that off to my coworker. They open it up and they're like, oh, that's fun. Let's go ahead and double click on it to get some more details. View more details here. Or let's go ahead and try to remove the signature so I can make changes to it. So we can edit it anyway. Say yes. It'll remove the signature. Click OK. So you no longer have that red ribbon down in the lower left hand corner. You just have a simple uh, graphic here. That you can select and delete. Now this digital signature of course is always there, but if you want to start from scratch or you want to remove this uh, signature, let me show you how to do it. Let me minimize that down to the taskbar. You can either click on the start button and go to computer or, well it's on my desktop, double click open up the computer. Double click on the share drive. In other words, we're going to dig down deep to get to where the signature is hiding so we can go ahead and delete it. We're going to go to the users folder. and Then we have all the users logins. I have one for Dreamforce, Kershaw's training. The one that I'm in now is training. Double click to open that up. And then we have what's called a hidden folder. You want to watch my Windows 7 training video to uh, learn how to unhide your folders so you can see the hidden folders. The reason why they hide the folders is because you're getting into areas now that if you start deleting or destroying things, it'll screw up your computer. So in any case, let's go into the faded folder, the one that should be hidden. Double click open that up. Let's go into the roaming folder, to the Microsoft folder, double click. Let's go to our system certificates, to my certificates, and their certificates right there. Double click and that's the uh, serial number. Go ahead and right click and delete it. And once you delete it, you'll be starting from scratch to go ahead and sign up through a third party or to go through all the steps as you just went over to create a new digital signature. And once you have it set up, then it goes a lot faster when it comes to signing your documents. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great deals on my products, please look down in the description below this video.